it took so long since enactment in 2015 until we actually see something real come into to place is simply that we had to get the house in order. The structures had to be in place and they didn't exist before that. For example, justice services had no formal mandate. The Gunawagi Justice Commission Constitution wasn't amended in about uh, 15 years. So we had, to, um, we had to organize, we had to strategize, we had to put all the players and pieces in place before we could actually get into implementing the Justice Act. People have stopped me in grocery stores and asked me about it. Uh, you know, different places throughout the community, people are wondering, hey, where's it at? What's happening with it? I haven't heard too much about it. And I'll always tell them that there's a lot of work going on, but a lot of it's what I call behind the scenes work. It's research, it's drafting, it's analysis, it's building these different documents and drafts that we're now finally ready to share with people. There's always been a lot of support for the Justice Act, and especially for keeping these sorts of issues in the community. It, it's certainly been a long time coming and it's really uh, exciting to finally be seeing, you know, the fruits of the labor that's been going on here at Justice Services and with our working group. And, you know, this is uh, the first step in really, you know, asserting the jurisdiction and setting it up to build upon it. The first part we're implementing is a protocol for transferring criminal files from the Court of Ganawaga to Skana Ozunda. And it outlines the practices and procedures for getting files out of our court to Skana to be resolved using restorative justice. And why that's important is that Skana Zunda is the entryway to our justice system. We sometimes call it the foundation. And wherever feasible, uh, that's where we want cases to go and be resolved using traditional based practices. Um, you know, I'll always say to people, courts are not always the best way. Tribunals aren't always the best way. Sometimes you need to sit there, speak with people, resolve issues, and come to some sort of conclusion in that way. Um, that's why it's important. Uh, we always say, and others say, you know, SCON is the foundation. And documents like this give meaning to those words. We're not just saying it's important. We're treating it like it's important. We're trying to get cases to this, to this service. We're always very uh, eager to assert jurisdiction and we want to defend it. We have to start internally and then work our way out. So if we were to just develop from the top down, right, it becomes more difficult to defend, particularly in terms of like a legal system. So given that this is the foundation, this is internal. We don't need anybody's approval and we don't go for anybody's approval ever. But, you know, that's sort of the perception that's given sometimes when we're having discussions with um, the outside uh, authorities for coexistence is what I call it. This doesn't require any of that. This is all internal. If we put in place uh, all of the internal mechanisms for our own system and we're able to defend it based on, on all of that, then as we go outwards and now we're getting, you know, we're building upon that and the um, system is growing, in my opinion, it's going to become easier to defend in this, um, from the outside in the sense that, look, we've done it. We did it from the beginning, from, the, you know, we started at the origins, we grew and we're able to do this, we're capable. You don't need to tell us how to do it. You don't need to, um, you know, take our hand and, and walk us through it. Uh, that whole paternalistic um, idea of, uh, of how we need to be, you know, treated sometimes, for me, that is uh, key in, you know, getting rid of that. Like, we don't need mommies and daddies to hold our hands. We're able to do this, because I sometimes feel like that's what the outside, um, government, you know, feels like they still need to tell us how things have to be done. Well, the service has been around for 20 plus years now, and we currently have a coordinator, an assistant coordinator, and an advisor who work at SCANA, meeting with clients, and we're needed facilitating different conferences to resolve disputes. So the people are in place, the service has, has existed for a long time. This is just one more avenue to get people who might have problems to SCANA. Uh, this isn't the only way. Uh, this is transferring criminal files from the court to Skana, but anybody could call their office and say, look, I have a problem. What can I do? Is this suitable? Uh, people do walk-ins off the street. People come from different places to inquire about the services. Uh, so it's one more way for people to uh, potentially resolve their issues at Skana Zunda. That certainly uh, is something to always keep in mind that it had... Uh community-wide support almost, if I can say that, right, for the, for the Justice Act. 
I think though that at the time when it was uh, created, you create the law and everything in the law is great on paper, right, in black and white, and you have all kind of visions. But all of the work that actually goes into every single piece, I don't think people always see that. And that's why uh, both Kevin and I get a lot of questions. What's taking so long? Why isn't this up and running? Um, and it's not the only thing we work on uh, in the justice portfolio or justice services works on, right? There's, there's a current court that has to be run. There's SCANA as it exists currently with the files that it does have. There's all the internal. Um, then politically, there's some you know political pieces that we've just been trying to address. So um, it's certainly not something that can be set up overnight. Uh, and I try to explain that all the time to community members, but it's hard and I understand it's very exciting and we all want to have our own justice system, but we want to make sure it's done right. Uh, this isn't the last protocol that's going to be developed to transfer files to SCANA. We're looking at having a similar protocol with the uh, prosecution office in Long Gale to get things out of the Long Gale court back to Ganawage. We're looking at having a protocol between the future administrative tribunal and SCANA. Same idea. There might be cases going to the tribunal that would be better resolved at SCANA. So wherever we can, we're trying to divert files to Scana Zunda. Yeah, and I think that that's a really important piece to add to this because, as mentioned, again, I keep repeating, uh, Scana is the foundation and this protocol with Long Gale would be to transfer those criminal files that, that meet a certain criteria to Scana to be resolved there and, and taking it essentially like out of the jurisdiction of Long Gale. Uh, of course, the file, uh, in terms of formalities, has to be officially closed there once the, um, the file is complete here. Uh, but it gives us back, uh, you know, the jurisdiction over our, 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 our people and um, allows us to resolve it once again in a more restorative fashion rather than in the adversarial fashion that exists uh, out there. So it really is an important piece. And that part is not linked to the Justice Act per se, but that's what I mentioned earlier. Is there's a lot of other things that are going on to help our entire justice system be up and running and get the um, uh, full force of our jurisdiction uh, in place, you know, across the board, so. At some point, um, we'll be complete and we won't need to implement Justice Act anymore. It'll be there, it'll meet the needs of the community and then it's about uh, maintaining and, and growing it where it makes sense to further grow it.